orange, mint, cinnamon, and honey. Yeah, it's very good. Hello, how many of you get migraines? Because they suck and migraines can actually debilitate a person for like the day, pretty much. I have been there before many times. I have unfortunately been migraine susceptible since I was roughly seven years old. No one really knew why. I just had migraines like three to sometimes four times every single week growing up through my life. And it was absolutely fucking terrible. But there have been two times in my life that they either stopped or kind of intermittent on and off. The first time that they actually stopped was when I was in high school football. Yeah, the entire time I did not get a single migraine. Is it down a road? Goes underneath. Get his head out of there or try to. Baffling, I know. The other time in my life that it was kind of intermittent, like I still got them, but nowhere near as frequently, was after I met my wife. Well, specifically after we kind of became official and moved in together and you know, those, those years, not like previously. And this on and off period of migraines continued up until roughly two months after our separation, at which point my migraines have all but stopped. In these past many months, I've had three migraines in roughly uh, five months. And apart from my period in high school football, that is the longest period of time with the least amount of migraines I've ever experienced in my life. And it just so happens, currently I am also the least angry I have ever been in my entire life. Yes, I was able to make this correlation, but only after many, 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 many hours of therapy and books and a willingness to dive deeper into myself. I need some more tea. Mm, so good. Just a half a teaspoon of sugar. Mm. Brown sugar though. You know, no bleach. And this period of no anger and no migraines continued up until a few weeks ago. At which point I became so angry for nine days straight that for two days in that time period, I was tiptoeing that borderline with intense rage. And having this anger come back, even just for those nine days, made me truly understand how long anger as a whole had been a part of my everyday life and the knowledge that this anger could have rerooted itself back within me and this time possibly for good absolutely terrified me to my core. But I did not let this overwhelming sense of fear grip me to doing nothing. And I also didn't let this anger control me. I didn't make it so that I had no alternative other than to fight back because that's what I had done my entire life. And I was losing that battle every single day and I had no realization of it. So this time I let the anger flow through me. I didn't act upon it, but I let it flow. And I did that so that I could learn. I wanted to learn not just from my anger, but I wanted to learn my anger. What was it from? What was it trying to attack? What was it trying to protect me from? What was it trying to tell me? Essentially, I let it flow so that I could give it the attention that it had been crying out for my entire cognizant life. And by doing this, I was able to, not so much withdraw from my anger, but I was able to see my anger as what it is. For lack of better terms, it is trying to protect you from something. When you feed that anger, you don't get a sense of what the whole picture is. You just react from the anger and you're not giving it the attention that it deserves. By giving it the attention that it had been craving, I understand my anger. That's not to say that I will no longer ever be angry. That's stupid. I'm human. I make mistakes. I have emotions. I'm gonna give in to them every now and again. To be human is to make mistakes, but you have to be able to learn from those mistakes. And knowing yourself is the only way to truly begin down a path to not only accepting yourself and being okay with who you are, all facets, but to be able to accept others for what they are, mistakes and all. And the big step 
to understanding yourself is to be vulnerable. I know this scares a lot of people and, and myself included, I was there my entire life, but you don't have to be vulnerable to everyone else to know yourself. If that's what happens because of knowing yourself, let it. That's kind of natural. Be vulnerable with yourself so that you can learn yourself, all facets. You have to be able to pull back the curtain on everything that is you, including the darkness, that anger that resides in you, if it's there. And you have to expose it and learn from it and give it the attention, the right attention that it has been craving the entire time. And you'll do it at your own pace. You don't have to do it the way that I did with countless hours of therapy and books. You don't have to do any of that. But don't be stagnant. Don't let yourself drown by the weight of not knowing who you are. Let the tools be utilized. Help yourself up and learn about your strengths and your weaknesses because you can turn those weaknesses into strengths. That's all I got for you guys tonight and uh, I'll see you on the next video.